General McDowell is in full retreat on his way back to the capital. His mission now is to save Washington and what's left of his army. Losses? Over 3,000. And 1,500 men threw down their arms and let themselves be marched off to prison. Where were that, Green? Well, I was there, sir. Some of the men hid in the woods on the way to the front. Others threw down their arms at the first sight of blood and fighting, but the majority of those green troops fought courageously until they were ordered to retreat. How many cannon did we lose? 28. 17 of them were rifled. It's a disaster, sir. Maybe I shouldn't have interfered. Well, Mr. President. I reckon a captain of volunteers in the Black Hawk War is not a military man. When I gave my first order, my men shouted back, go to hell. I finally had to offer to whip each volunteer personally to get him to do what I wanted. But somehow, those rowdy frontier yahoos and I, poor excuse for a soldier to the man, got the job done. And so will this army. I know them, these citizen soldiers. They will not allow the Union to die, nor must we. Will the South be allowed to take by violence? But they could not win in an election. The issue here is not just the fate of the United States, but of the whole family of man. Whoa. With these troops all headed this way, we'll have to stay on the back road. There's no way we can fix it. Nothing else to do but leave the wagon. And take the horse and whatever else we can carry. I'll unhitch him. the rest of the bags. I'll never be able to take everything now. Just what we can't do it out. doing honey child <laughs> stealing out of somebody's wagon look what we got here lieutenant pretty little winch got her hand caught in the cookie jar or maybe she's a reb spy is that what you are darky maybe a little pleasure in a loosen your tongue we're still bound by the fugitive slave laws so you're considered contraband you'll be taken to headquarters in the morning 
put her under guard. Yes, sir. <laughs> Come on. Get her. Come on, Come on. Get her. <laughs> Getting wet, Missy. Come on. Get around it. Come on, Missy. Come on, get up. Don't you be screaming. to me later on, gal. And I might see if I can fix it so you can slip away before morning. I'll be dead before I'll be nice to you. You got a lot of sass, ain't you, Winch? You gonna change your tune. Get in there. Everett! Jake! Carter!
They say we're going the right way. Mr. President, it's Christmas in July out there. I had no idea our victory at Manassas was so impressive. The Yankee battle flag, one of our colonels just came in. It was taken when Jackson stood there like a stone wall. My cousin Charles was with Beauregard. Uh, no doubt he covered himself in glory, as did all of our boys. If only our supply system could do as well. That is our problem. Most of our railroads run north to south, making it difficult at best to supply our western troops. All of the gauges are different, so cars cannot be transferred from one line to another. So we might have to use wagon trains as a link. Unfortunately, each state claims sovereignty over any Confederate right to command rolling stock. Those states' rights we fight for could end up plaguing us. The frustration, General Maine, of trying to get the various governors to give me their state militias for our army. I understand that after Manassas, we could have taken Washington had those militias supported our Potomac forces. That's true. Jackson swore that if he'd had 10,000 fresh troops, he could have smashed the last defenders and captured the Yankee capital. Only we could have gathered our forces in time. But our army was in as much chaos from victory as the Yankees were in defeat. Mm. When the rain came and our chance of ending the war in one bold stroke was lost. Yet this proves to the world that we are an independent nation. Uh, Mr. President, uh, General Maine. General Maine, two days ago, your sister, uh, Brett, stopped by on her way back to South Carolina. She left you this note. She seemed upset. Thank you. Problem, General May? Uh, sir, I must ask for leave. There's uh, an emergency with my family. I'm sorry, sir. Have a safe journey. Thank you, sir. Surprise for you, Madeline, my dear. But first, a toast to one union shattered at Manassas and another restored at Resolute. With one battle, we won a war and our freedom. Surely you can spare a smile for your husband for that, if not for this magnificent dessert. You know, Durham told me an amusing comment that an English journalist made just after the victory message was sent to the telegraph office at Charleston. He said, the American Union was so short-lived that a man might be present at its birth <laughs> and still be alive at its death. Excellent. Try it. I don't want any. I had to make it just for you. I want my freedom! You can't force me to love you! I have been damn good to you, Mrs. Lamont. I have tried to court you. I have offered you everything but my life to gain your favor. <laughs> Defy me if you wish. But you will do as I want. I promise you.
watch while I kill your lover? Evelyn? Yes, do. on your victorious election. We are so very honored to have you here at my little party. It's our pleasure, Mrs. Huntoon. You know, it's times like these when men need to enjoy themselves whenever they can. Why, that's just what I was telling James. Although I think he was enjoying himself a little too much at President Davis's reception a few months ago. Some of his friends thought it was right funny to get him all licked up and into a discussion with the President. Yes, we heard of that. Some men have no more sense than a June bug. I wish you and I were running the war. Why, it'd be over in no time at all. <laughs> Don't you think that'd be a little difficult in your hoop skirts, ladies? <laughs> no more so than in those hot uniforms our men have to wear. <laughs> James, darling, why don't you come over here? Excuse me. Why don't you offer our guests of honor some of that wonderful champagne from France? It was the last we could get before the blockade. I am so honored that you could join us. We have not only the election to celebrate, but also the panic in the ranks of our enemies. Panic, sir? Uh, why, those fools in Washington are so busy pointing accusing fingers at one another over their last defeat, they may tear each other apart and save us the bother. <laughs> <laughs> James, dear, let's not talk about the war. Oh, yes, yes. Let me have the honor of serving you some of that wonderful champagne myself before my colleagues from the Treasury drink it all up. <laughs> this way. Thanks, sir. I wasn't at all sure you'd be here today. I don't believe that for a moment, Mrs. Hunter. <laughs> I presume you've made good use with my money. 
That champagne you're serving? It's getting everybody inebriated. Came right off our ship. Y'all was in mine. Shh. I told Vice President Stevens that it was the last we could get before the blockade. Man's as gullible as Jefferson Davis. Believe anything he hears. I suppose I should see to my other guests. Ask him. When are you gonna see to me? Soon, Mr. Ben. Very soon. In fact, the minute you're ready to discuss my profits. I don't like to be kept waiting. I have little patience where women are concerned. Well, Mr. Bent, maybe I shouldn't bother then. Because I like a man with a lot of patience. Well, then, considering all your attributes, patience may be a virtue I could make an effort to acquire. But I think the effort is worth finding out, don't you, Mr. Bent? James, you remember Mr. Bent, don't you? Why, he was telling me the most amusing story about a man who learned to be patient. Mr. Ben, why don't you tell James the story? I had to see my other gigs. You have a lovely wife, sir. Thank you, sir. Gentlemen shouldn't act as though he expected such a surprise, Mr. Bent. Oh, I didn't know the chess was your game. But doesn't it require more than one player? so funny. Your games. Your little intrigues. Yes. But I know you want me. I want you. I want you more than any woman I've ever known. I want you, on my own terms.
is it? Where's my surprise, Dad? I want my surprise. Your surprise is right up there. <gasps> now, you wait. You slow down. Now, you watch your step. Now, be careful. You're going to trip on your dress. Look at that. No way, Dad. You don't show a little patience. <laughs> I am not going to show you. <laughs> now, you stop right here. Now, I cannot trust you not to peek. Come here. Oh, El, you know I'm afraid of the dark. You used to be afraid of me, but I think you've gotten over that. What makes you think I've ever been afraid of any man? Now, you hush up. I won't show you a thing. Come on. Well, this is silly. I don't like doing this. Just you watch your step. Give me your hand. <laughs> this is silly. Right in here. Okay. All right? <laughs> Couturiers of Paris have honed the skills for a lifetime, expressly for your pleasure. <laughs> oh, well, you make me feel just like I'm royalty, which means... Mm, is that I could... Mm, have absolutely everything in the world that I want. <laughs> right? I don't think I've ever seen you so excited before. You know, I am so pleased to have found somebody whose dedication to the pursuit of luxury, pleasure and power is as singular as my own. Makes us a perfect couple, don't you think? Oh, uh, yes, yes. It's perfect. So I have decided to make you my first lady. <laughs> Ill, I'm no one's first lady. Are you just saying that you want to marry me? What I am saying is when the time is right, I want you to be my consort. Mm -hmm. What I am saying is when Jefferson Davis has shown his true coward the colors, a man more fit will take over the Confederacy. Future voyages of our ships will provide for a small but disciplined army under my leadership. A weak fool like Jefferson Davis can't lead the South to victory. He has no taste for war. I have the taste. And I have the military ability. And I will do whatever is necessary to eliminate him and put us in his place. Why, El, that's treason. When my plans have come to fruition, your marriage to that buffoon will be taken care of. And when I've consolidated my power, we will rule. We will rule together. We will have royal privileges and luxuries fit for an emperor and his empress. <laughs> Hell, you make it sound just like Napoleon and Josephine. <laughs> Don't you laugh at me. Don't you ever laugh at me. Or I will kill you. Get your hands off me! I do admire your spirit. Your temperament reminds me of a horse I used to have. Now you hear me. We are a pair. We are a real pair. And we will be exactly like Napoleon and Josephine. Lovers and rulers of an empire. not having second thoughts, are you, lady? Oh, I'm just being foolish. About who I am and how it might affect you. Madeline, we have settled all that. But if we have children... Don't say if. We will have children. When the war ends, you're going to have to live here in this county where your happiness and your success will depend on what people think of you. Look at me. 
Will you look at me? My happiness depends on only one person. You. Now, we are going to be man and wife. Oh, yeah. Miss Clarissa! Mr. Ori! Miss Clarissa! Mr. Ori! Miss Clarissa! It's Miss Brad and Cinderamus. They come home. Brad? Ori! Are you all right? No. What happened? We're here. That's all that matters. Mother, oh, dear child, you're safe. You all right? Jim. It's sure is good to see you, Cindy. So close. Yeah, what you been doing? See, hey, Ramus, we were so worried. Star, that was a trip I ain't never gonna forget. Glad you're all right. I have my maid of honor. Oh, I'd love to be. Well, come on, little sister. Let's get you in the house. Do you take Madeline Eugenie to be your lawfully wedded wife? For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to have and to hold from this day forward? I do. Do you promise to love? honor and keep her, forsaking all others as long as you both shall live. I do. And you, Madeline Nutini, do you take our remain to be your lawfully wedded husband, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to have and to hold from this day forward? I do. Do you promise to love, honor, and obey him, forsaking all others as long as you both shall live? I do. So in the sight of Almighty God, and by the authority vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. People aren't here who should be. All of our friends and cousin Charles and the Hazards, I'm sure they're with us in their hearts. I know how much you miss Billy. But today is a happy occasion, Mother, for all of us. Oh, it's more than that, Brett. Your brother's marriage is an act of faith and hope that Mont Royal will go on. is just going to have to manage without you. <laughs> You're so serious? What are you thinking about? It's the best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and when was that? The day I was born. <laughs> Now stop teasing me. Tell me. The 
day I met you was the day I was born. said to give Papa another kiss. She did. That's from both of us. We're going to miss you, George. <sighs> the casualty list came in from our latest disaster at Valverde. The president wept when he read it. His good friend, Colonel Meeker, was among the dead. So was Andrew Langley. He graduated. He was a good friend to both Ori and me. One of our agents in the South reports that Ori is doing the same work for their president as I'm doing for Lincoln. I'll guarantee you he's every bit as anxious to get out of Richmond as I am of Washington. George, you're not going to ask for a field commander. Every day, I sit and hand out fat army contracts to greedy war profiteers while good men die. I understand how you feel. No, you don't. I am angry, and I am frustrated, and I can't hide it anymore. You're doing what the president wants you to do. Isn't that important enough? I should be with the real army, not this regiment of paper shufflers. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I do understand how you feel. Your loyalties are being torn apart by this war, but please, don't let that happen to us. I couldn't bear it. General, this seems to be the only place in Richmond where we can escape that army of dignitaries. It's not every day, sir, that a new nation inaugurates its first permanent president. Uh, I only hope that our new Congress will be more decisive than the provisional one. They must approve my enlistment bill. We also need a law against important luxury items to the exclusion of arms, sir. Any further word about who's behind that damnable cartel? Well, I know the name of one of them, but I still have no proof. Since what they're doing is not yet illegal, I have to find another way to stop them. That sort of corruption could bring down my government. If I could just smash this one ring somewhere, maybe it'd be a warning to others who'd build their fortunes on our army's sacrifice. Excuse me, sir. The dispatch from General Johnston oh. in Tennessee. Fort Donaldson, sir. Grant has forced Buckner to surrender unconditionally. Two thousand dead and wounded. And more than 12,000 are now, now prisoners. The North recovered from Manassas, sir. We shall from this. There'll be no more talk now of an easy victory. George Washington's statue has always been an inspiration to me. That's why I chose his birthday to become the first president of the Confederacy. That great man refused to give up. In spite of everything, he brought to birth a new nation. So will I. So will I. Yeah. Yeah. Finish loading these supplies, deliver them to the quartermaster court at Fredericksburg. Will you meet us at Belle Plain with more rail cars, sir? 
No, apparently there doesn't seem to be any more available. I'm headed north on another matter. North, sir? You know we're not that far from the front line. An agent who's been working on that cartel investigation found out they've been running luxury goods past the Yankee blockade. You know who's behind it, sir? And it is urgent that we stop him as soon as possible. I'll meet you in Fredericksburg, Lieutenant, when my business is finished. Good luck. Sorry about bringing you here, sir. The last time I used this place, there weren't so many Yankee patrols around. I was lucky none of them saw me. What more have you learned? Major Bent has bank accounts in New York, getting fatter by the day. That is still no proof. It's nothing to stand up to court. He's the cleverest swindler that ever drew breath, and he's paying off all the right people. Any word from France about his ships? They're running a steady trade, from all accounts. Where does he offload? He puts them in at small coves along the Virginia and South Carolina coasts. It avoids the Yankee blockade and any questions from us about what he's transporting. That may work to our advantage. If we could find one of those coves and wait for him to anchor his ships. <laughs> we might be able to put him out of business without troubling a court about it. And we will keep these thoughts to ourselves, won't we, Captain? Of course, General. Sounds like storm's letting up. Better make a run for it while we still can. Best not to ride out together. Just hope those Yankees have sense enough to stay by their fires tonight. Good luck. Yeah! Pardon, sir. No harm done, Lieutenant. But it's a hell of a night to be out of control. Yes, sir. Uh, we were looking for a rebel. Might be a spy. The sworn his trail led this way. Wish I could help you. But I'm on my way back from a long inspection tour. I haven't seen anybody for hours. Yeah. I think your rebel's probably long gone by now. Yes, sir. I was thinking that myself. Well, we'll get back to camp. You're welcome to join our fire, sir. I'm much obliged, but I've got to be going. I've got a lot of ground to cover. We'll have a safe journey, sir. my life, George, again. You damn fool. How the hell did you happen to get this far north? Well, I'm not sure I should tell you, Colonel Hazard. This little truce might not be so easy. I guess not. 
since we have it, why don't we find a dry place to talk? Why don't we? We're too damn old to sit watching the rain like we did in Mexico. Come on. So you tell Billy that my little sister isn't as fragile as he thinks. She arrived in Mount Royal smiling like a true man. No. Well, he's worried sick about her, so you just make sure she's safe. Well, you just promised to keep your Yankee troops out of South Carolina. What's that on your finger? <laughs> Madeline and I were finally married. Oh, congratulations, man. I just wish you'd been there to be my best man. I'll make it up to you about it. Throwing you the damnedest party you ever saw after the <laughs> war. Great. We'll make it a West Point reunion. I'll even invite Marcus Hassler. Remember him? <laughs> he was killed by a Union sharpshooter last week. Maury, Lincoln bent over backwards to accommodate the sound. Why did he invade Virginia? You call Bull Run accommodating? Wait a minute, I was there, I saw it. There was an entire rebel army waiting to invade the capital. What was Lincoln supposed to do? He took an oath to preserve the Union. The South started it by firing on Sumter. We did not start anything. We just wanted to be left alone. You never even gave him a chance. You refused to compromise. He just could not extend slavery into the new territories. That is not the issue, George. We both agree that slavery is an outmoded institution that will only hold the South back. Dear God, what has happened to us? Well, I think under the circumstances that it was best that we ended our business partnership. Ori, you should have turned me into your Yankee troops. It would have been one less rib you had to fight. Ori, you don't mean that. Take care of yourself, Maury. Pardon me, ma'am, but we've been here all day. We haven't heard from our son, but we heard that he was wounded. Can you help us find him? I'm sorry, I don't work here. Perhaps a nurse could... Thank you, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am, we're looking for our son. Miss Dix, excuse me, I'm Virginia Hazard, Grady. Oh, Mrs. Brady. Congressman Green speaks very highly. We've never had fighting like this before on this continent. Skirmishes, maim, and kill more than major battles in earlier wars. We're not prepared for such casualties. Only yesterday, 200 men were wounded on the bluffs of the Potomac. I want to do whatever I can to help ease the suffering mystics. Nurses are scarce, Mrs. Grady, especially good ones. Some of them can't stand the blood and the filth and the constant shortage of medicines. And some of them have been called home to families who have lost husbands and brothers. I assure you, I can stand a great deal. And as for my family, I understand that you are related to Colonel George Hazard and that your family owns the Hazard Ironworks in Pennsylvania. Yes. We're all helping in the war effort. Well, Congressman Green seems to feel that you are equal to the hardships of a war nurse. Congressman Green understands my deep desire to serve my country. I read your book, Miss Dix, and several others. And I've always been very, very quick to learn. You will have to learn, Mrs. Grady if I override Mrs. Riley's recommendation and admit you into the nurse's corps, and I'm not speaking only of medical knowledge, you must be prepared for insults from the men 
and hostility from the doctors, who will sometimes treat you no better than a common servant or... Or a slave. I've endured being treated like a slave before. In my abolitionist work... I'm not referring to parades and speeches. I have seen horrors as bad or worse than any war. Atrocities inflicted by southern slaveholders on their black victims, I've witnessed that. I've touched them with my own hands. Bodies burned, beaten with whips, wounds, scars, hideous disfigurement. You realize that many of the patients are southern wounded and that a nurse's duty is to treat all victims of war with compassion. Of course. You must put aside all personal feelings and give equal treatment to all. I have always believed in equality for all men and women. Then let us talk about particulars, Mrs. Grady. Compensation, transportation, and living allowance. I think, gentlemen, you'll find that this ward is typical of our military hospitals. Our staff of doctors is extremely capable. It would appear that your nursing staff is capable as well, Mr. Fielding. These men seem to be getting the finest possible care. Yes. Congressman Green, may I present Mrs. Grady, one of our nurses? Thank you, Mr. Fielding. I already have the pleasure of knowing Mrs. Grady. In fact, it was my privilege to recommend her to the nursing corps. We're honored to have you here, sir. Not many men of your stature have seen fit to personally inspect our hospitals. That is inexcusable. This work is second only to serving in the field. It is our duty to restore soldiers like this fine young lad to the battlegrounds. Congressman, there's so much you could do to help us here. The government moves very slowly in answering our requests. That will be enough, Mrs. Grady. Congressman, we'd better be going along. Mr. Fielding. I think that the point of view of your staff is extremely important. After all, they have the day-to-day -day task of caring for the wounded. I, for one, am very interested in what Mrs. Grady has to say about the current situation. I'll be joining a field hospital, sir. I've heard there's a terrible shortage of morphine powder. That's the only thing that quiets the gang green cases when they have to amputate. Virgilia, I did not make this trip to talk about morphine powder. I came to see you. Your committee makes appropriations, Sam. You could see it too that we got more money for the medications we need. All right, Virgilia, I'll do what you want. The question is, what are you willing to do for me? Correct me if I'm wrong, Sam. You are married, and you have a family in Indiana. You know my views. They haven't changed. You know I'd divorce my wife for you. If only Indiana weren't such an unforgiving state. I can't afford the scandal. And I can't belong to you. Not like that. Sam, I don't want to lose you as a friend. Please say that I haven't. No. You haven't. I'll get you the medicine you need. Thank you. Julia, the next time you need a favor from me, expect to do me one in return. It's the way it works. Even between friends. Hey, 
They may have given us a bloody nose in the West, but with Jackson tearing up Shenandoah, he can make a dash for Washington at any time. That must be why Lincoln took that whole corps away from McClellan, below Richmond. Moved it up here to protect the capital. Still gonna be a lot of Yankees coming up that peninsula toward Richmond. Yeah, but not as many as we thought. I figure five of them for each one of us. <sighs> we gotta get back. Johnson's gotta be told he's gonna be facing a few more Yankees than he figured out. I seem to remember a Lieutenant Ambrose Powell who thought he was the best turned out officer in the whole Confederate Army. He was until he let his captain talk him into being a scout. You wanted to be a hero. I thought I'd look better. of the Legion. Legion lay dying in Al Al Algiers. Algiers, the city in Africa. <laughs> Go ahead. There was lack of women's nursing. There was dearth, dearth of women's Tears. <laughs> That's good. You read him better than I did after two years of school and much better. Look like a soldier, Miss Augusta. worth getting shot for. You were lucky, Captain Maine. You lost a lot of blood. But the wound itself shouldn't take too long to heal. I hope not. I have to be on my way in the morning. You're not going anywhere. At least not for a few days, till that shoulder heals. But if I don't make it back with what Pell found out? There are other ways to get your information to headquarters. I'll see that it gets done. Good night, Charles. Sleep well. just in this farm. Not many people teach their slaves to read. Oh, Washington and Boss aren't slaves. They worked as hard as we did, so my husband and I freed them and gave them a share of the farm. Never met anyone quite like you. 
the way you care about people. Maybe that's why I find you so attractive. <laughs> Miss Augusta! Miss Augusta! Excuse me, Captain. Miss Augusta, your mare's starting to fold right now. Oh, she's my pride and joy. I hid her from the troops. You'll have to excuse me. Go ahead. But if it's a boy, you better name him after me. Something I can do for you, Washington? No, sir. Ain't for me. It's for her. You might think I'm stepping out of line, Captain. But Bars and me, we're the only family Miss Augusta got left now. So she's told me. Go on, say your piece. Well, uh, she... Miss Augusta took it real hard when the baby was stillborn. And then Mr. Tom died. And you being a soldier and all, and the war still goes on and on. I don't know if she can live through more than somebody else, Captain. See what I mean? A little wobbly in the legs, but a year from now, he'll be chasing the wind. It's calls for a celebration. I've been saving a bottle of wine for a special occasion. And this is it. I'd enjoy that, Augusta. It'd be a nice way to say goodbye. I have to leave tomorrow. Which of you is Mrs. Maine? I'm Mrs. Tilly Maine, Mrs. Ori Maine, Mrs. William Hazard. And whom do we have the honor of receiving? My apologies, ma'am. 
Second Lieutenant Samuel Barstow. First quartermaster's court out of Charleston. We're here to requisition supplies. What will you be needing, Lieutenant? A great deal, I'm afraid. Three quarters of what was left, and most of the animals. We had no choice, Brett. It was our duty to obey the order. Our troops need those supplies. So do we, Mother. I don't know how we're going to feed everyone now. I don't mean to interrupt, but hmm? have you heard from Miss Brett yet? I'll just keep trying to get letters to the lines. You sure love her, don't you? I sure hope I find somebody when I grow up. You will. I want to get this done before we move out. One more time. Never seen a man could write so many letters. What do you find to say? All I think about is having you back in my arms. Oh. You'll probably never get my letters, and I know you can't write to me from South Carolina. Your wife is from South Carolina? That's right. But just give me the letter. Well, you're a damn rebel lover. That's his business. Give him his letter. Give me the letter. Give him back his letter, kid. Hey, 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 hey. minutes to appear in my tent. You are supposed to be officers and gentlemen who set a proper example for your men. I didn't start it, sir. Colonel. Did I give either one of you permission to talk? No, sir. No, sir. We have pushed the rebels up the peninsula. And we're about to knock at the gates of Richmond. And here I have two officers who would rather fight each other than the enemy. If another battle wasn't in prospect, I'd court-martial you both. I will not tolerate feuds under my command. Now save your fight for the rebels. Might not be much fighting now that they've got a new commander, sir. When Robert E. Lee is ready, sir, he'll come after us with everything he has. And we better damn well be ready. You're dismissed, Mr. Kent. I had high hopes for you, Lieutenant Hazard. In spite of our first meeting, you've proved yourself a responsible officer. Now, what was this misunderstanding all about? Sir, Lieutenant Kent seems to resent it that my wife is from the South. And I haven't heard from her in months. We're all under a lot of pressure, Billy. From the generals on down. We can't let it affect our judgment. The sooner we win this war, the faster we'll all get back home. Yes, sir. You're dismissed, Lieutenant.
recommendation. Yes, more artillery. Yeah. But I heard it well. Do the best you can. Bring it back. Bring it back. I got a message that the president wanted to see me. Yes, he could use an ally just now. A pack of wolves, the damn newspapers and preachers. Blaming him for McClellan. Where is he? In the cabinet room with Stanton, Stewart, the others. What's happened? You haven't heard? No. McClellan is sitting at Harrison's Landing and refuses to move. General McClellan has been outthought and outfought. And our one chance for an early end to this terrible rebellion, gone. Well, why do you suggest, Mr. Secretary, that we negotiate a surrender? Is that what you're thinking, Mr. President? Gentlemen, we must begin to see this war for what it is. Bloody Shiloh and the nightmare of the peninsula should prove to us that this fight will be to the death. And now their General Lee has proven himself to be a great strategist. If we don't do something decisive, then I believe England will join France in support of the South. And that would change the whole course of the war. Our European friends would never abide slavery. Nor any longer should we. Are you going ahead with your plan to free the slaves in the rebel states, sir? Your own people don't want the Negroes free to roam the streets and take their jobs. Regardless, we must now put our fight on the side of human rights. An Emancipation Proclamation would do just that. If you do, sir, it could cost you the border states Possibly the election, and probably the war, sir. It may anyway. Mr. President, I approve of such a proclamation. But it might seem like a, a cry of desperation. Hold off the measure till you can give it to the country, supported by a military success. That's good poker, Mr. Seward. Play from strength. Gentlemen, I need time to think on this. George, Seward is right. And so is Stanton about McClellan. He's mismanaged the best equipped force in Western history. Give me more background on our top generals, including those Western fellas. Thomas Grant Sherman. Yes, sir. I need me a Lee, a Jackson, a commander who can get me a victory. Then I can free the slaves. One, 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 two, one. What time shall we pick you up, Mother? Three o'clock should be fine. I doubt even the volunteers committee could dither longer than that. I never saw such a fuss over how to roll bandages. You'll get them organized, Mother. You always do. Thank you, Stanley. What are you and Isabel going to do today? Oh, Stanley has a business meeting. And I've got some shopping to do. As usual. Well, goodbye then, dear. See you at three. It still worries me, Isabel. I know she wouldn't approve of us dealing with a man like Morgan, especially on military contracts. Your mother pays very little attention to Hazard Eye in these days. She's gotten so busy with her war effort committee. George and your mother don't run the company now. We do. And it's up to us to decide what's best for them. I don't know that this is best for the company. Morgan has a bad reputation, and he has to cut corners to sell alloys at such prices. Now, if we buy from him, who's to say our cannon won't be defective? Nonsense. Morgan quoted us a low price because he wants to undercut his competition and make some money out of this war, just like we do. It's simply good business, Stanley.
drive a hard bargain, Mr. Hazard. Well, those are our terms, Mr. Morgan. You take them or leave them. At that price, Britannia stand to make a pretty profit, considering what you'll charge the army for your cannon. We're all in business to make money, Mr. Morgan. I'm sure you'll make enough, even at the price we're offering. You're a very perceptive woman, Mrs. Hazard. So let's drink to our contract. What if someone should find out about this? We'll take certain precautions. I've designed a trademark for a fictitious company. We're stamping on all the cannon. Well, you've certainly thought of everything. So no one will find out. And even if they do, who's to say that George isn't the one responsible? There's nothing to worry about. Parky, set up another round. Take it. You're surprised to see me. Who are you? What are you doing here? Why didn't you tell her? Tell her it's my place she's taking as your mistress. Oh, yes. I used to come here quite often until he tired of me. I even have my own key that he gave me. Ashton, you'd like to meet Bedetta Halloween if I'm a business associate. Bedetta, this is Ashton. Oh, yes, I know all about the famous Mrs. Huntoon. Although somehow I rather doubt that her husband does. But he will soon, I promise you that. I don't think you'd be that stupid. First of all, coming from a lady of your character, I don't think he would believe you. Second of all, you'd be just making things unpleasant for everybody. And why shouldn't I make things unpleasant for you? You used me. I could kill you for that. We used each other. We had a business arrangement. I never pretended it was anything else. You let me believe that... That was your misfortune. Yes, I see that now. I suppose that's one reason I came here tonight, just to prove to myself what a mistake you really were. Hardly worth going to prison for. Now that you realize that, I think you should be leaving. First... Get your hands off me! I would like my house key back. I just want you to know what I can do to you in case you decide to be indiscreet about this evening. My best wishes, Mrs. Huntoon. I do hope you both get what you deserve. Same to you, Mrs. Halloran. I thought you had better taste than that. Taste, my dear, can be acquired. Thank you for coming, General Maine. I'm Berdetta Howler, and I've been expecting you. Ma'am. I'm sorry to bring you out on such short notice, but I'm leaving in the morning. You said you had some uh, important information that could help our war effort. Yes. I believe you know Alcana Bent. All too well. He and I used to be very special friends, but I've been replaced by someone I believe you also know. Mrs. Huntoon. Ashton, my sister. 
I'd be concerned, too, if you were my sister. And since I used to be partners with Mr. Bent, I know rather intimately just how ruthless he can be. But I think there's a way to stop Mr. Bent from doing any further harm to the Confederacy. Are you interested? I most certainly am. I'll give the signal before they have time to cast off. I wish we could give them what they really deserve, the traitors. All we can do is impound the cargo and arrest who's ever in charge. But at least Bent loses his goods, which will probably put him out of business for a while. Too bad he isn't here. He'd never risk it, but we'll get him. Hey, careful with that. You know what a case of French brandy wine costs? I'll take it out of your pay. Post the guard of six, Mercy, then we'll ship out. you in the name of the Confederate States of America. The hell you do. for bent up in smoke. Damn, or he may. Your fine, upstanding brother has put us right out of business. Aren't you exaggerating? It is not possible to exaggerate the damage your brother has done to us. When Maine burned our cargo, it sent up a signal fire to the Yankee blockaders. They took both our ships. Well, surely we can buy new ones. With what, Ashton? Our other capitalists tied up in far riskier ventures. Now, General Maine has timed his strike perfectly. That man will live to regret it. He will live to regret it many times over. What are you gonna do? Killing your brother would give me no pleasure. Far too easy and much too quick. I'm gonna do something much worse to him. I'm going to kill his nigger hoa. What are you saying? Or he's married to Madeline. He's far too honorable to keep another woman. He doesn't keep her anymore. He married her. Meet Madeline's mother. I don't believe it. She's the image of Madeline. But she doesn't look like a Negro. Thanks to her slave ancestors, she most definitely was. She was also a very expensive prostitute. Her portrait used to hang in the finest house in New Orleans. Madeline's mother? <laughs> well, that's just too perfect. Madeline's the most precious thing on earth to Ori. And when she is disposed of, it ought to kill him. Slowly. He'd find out, Elkina. If you hurt Madeline, he'll kill you. Well, he is welcome to try. He'd never rest as long as you were alive. But there's something we could do. Something that would make his life a living hell. 
he never connected with you or me. What are you talking about? We have the perfect weapon right here. Proof of the daughter of a black whore. Married into our family by lying to us. Why, the scandal would just ruin us all. Or I would be thrown out of the government. The family disgraced. Madeline's such a good woman. I'm sure she'd see that right away and feel bound to leave him. And I can make sure, or I never knows why. Well, that is a pretty scheme, Ashton, except for one small detail. I want all remain to know who ruined him and why. That's the best part. There's no reason why Ori can't be told. Eventually.